Which are, according to you, the fundamental challenges in your field of, uh, of research? The most fundamental uh, challenge is, is, of course, to understand how the brain works, just to say that in a one sent sentence. But that's, uh, of course, a little bit uh, too such a concise uh, definement, because if we uh, would put as our goal to understand how the human brain works, probably we can't progress too far. So we have to somehow <coughs> fragment the uh, question to smaller questions. And for example, if I would ask that um, maybe <clears throat> maybe if I would work in physics and I would ask that how does the sea or ocean work? So it, it's a silly question, but I would uh, I would need to ask that how are the waves formed and uh, so, somehow how how does the water freeze and etc. And the same thing we have to divide here the questions in a clever way. And I think one um, quite an important um, challenge here is that currently with the new brain imaging devices we get data, huge amount of data, so that each day for example there are maybe eight new functional magnetic resonance imaging studies are appearing each day and nobody can somehow really follow all the data and so that we can say that the, the Data are increasing in an exponential manner, but yeah. our understanding of the brain function, it's not even linear, increase as a function of time. And that means that now, when we get so much data, the, the, the expense for each new piece of understanding is more and more um, valued. Yeah, I so that um, I think that we should now very much invest invest to understanding the basic principles of, of these different elements of the brain function, how the, how the elements work together, and not only collect data like uh, crazy, <laughs> as it happens currently. Yeah, 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 I see. I, no, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, of course, it boils down to questions like uh, how the conscience emerge from the interaction of the various uh, synapses. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, in, in fact, that uh, I would probably say that how the mind emerges, not only the consciousness, but, but the human mind emerges. And in fact, that's really is an important question at some point, which binds now also different disciplines that are interested in, in the human mind. And it's my own understanding or somehow feeling is that we can't explain the emergence of the consciousness just by looking at the brain and the elements. But we have to look the connections of the brain with the environment. And so, because the people and the organisms, they are all the time actively um, acting in the environment, that the environment is somehow also reflected in brain function, like in time scales and spatial scales. So, this is one part which, in fact, is a very important um, like an experimental and conceptual challenge to try to understand how the human brain is shaped by the environment and how the, then the human mind emerges in this interaction. And um, for that purpose, for example, we need, in brain imaging, totally new approaches. We need to study the brain function in naturalistic situations, so that we don't only present such very artificial stimuli like tone tips or checkerboard patterns that are these such a very well-controlled stimuli and uh, widely applied. But we would need to use some videos or even, even live uh, social interaction. Mm. I see, interesting. So about the developments uh, um, of technology and or in other scientific fields, could you mention, you mentioned the uh, imaging and could you mention other, uh, other technical developments who could boost? Yeah, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm working in the, like the systems uh, neuroscience and the brain imaging. So the brain imaging is, uh, it's of course a very important tool for us and that different um, imaging modalities available. Some are very good in, in uh, spatial resolution, that means that they can tell us which part of the brain is activated, but then others are very good in telling when the brain is activated. And uh, of course we should combine these different tools. We should try to increase the spatial and temporal resolution they can provide. They are already quite nice devices, but they still 
tell us only in humans the, the brain activity at the level of very big neuronal groups. So this, this is one part that try to collect more and more accurate data from the human humans. But then, as I already mentioned, that we are getting so much data. So we are also very much relying on advanced uh, computation mechanisms. Yeah. And, uh, and they are now e extremely promising and uh, even surprising uh, um, new advances in machine learning, for example, uh, where people take lots of this brain imaging data and then they can tell the, somehow the features that discriminate between different uh, mind states, for example. It can be said on the basis of the brain data that whether a person has been seeing some uh, trees or some uh, cats, etc. So there are totally new types of uh, questions can be asked. But then I would also like to say here that the, in addition to this type of like, advancement of the brain imaging and then the computational uh, approaches, it will be also important then to advance to modeling and simulation. Okay. So that we would... <clears throat> um, okay, some people have said that we don't really understand certain phenomena if we can't recreate the phenomenon. <laughs> so in that sense that there are already some approaches that people try to simulate, for example, neurons and their connections, then networks and then larger and larger systems. So this is certainly is one, one such a very important approach because while doing that, we have to really carefully think what are the somehow the main principles that uh, govern this system. This brain and neural system they are very complex. So they are much more complex than just like uh, some physical systems. But they are, as some people say that the brain is the most complex device on the on the universe, but then think if you take two brains, like we are now speaking here, so it's already <laughs> quite a complex system. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> of course.